Hello all. Welcome to this session. In this session, I am going to answer Selenium interview question 75. That is, explain the framework you are using in your project. So, let me answer this with practical demonstration. So, what is that framework that I am using in my project? A simple answer. Because this question is asked to me, my answer may vary from your answer. It may be different from your answer. Okay. In your project, you may be using a different framework. Okay. But in my case, whatever the framework I am using, I'm going to explain guys. And that is going to be the popular, most popular framework in the market. That is none other than this Cucumber BDD hybrid framework with page object model and page factory. This is a framework that I'm using in my project. Okay. So I'm going to explain this framework with practical demonstration. Okay. In detail now. So let me quickly switch to this Eclipse ID where we have this Cucumber hybrid framework with page object model page factory. Let me explain this framework for you. Okay. So as you can see guys, uh, first thing, this is a Cucumber BDD. So the main things that will be there are feature files. So we'll be writing the scenarios in the feature file. Okay. For example, login functionality related feature is there in this login dot feature file. Under that we have several scenarios. You see several Cucumber BDD scenarios are there for each and every step of this uh, Cucumber BDD scenario, okay, the we have implemented the code, guys, okay, in the background of this step, we have the code implemented. Let me show you where the code is available, okay, so here, let's go to the login.java, okay, uh, I have written the code for the steps of the scenarios in the feature file in this login.java, since it is login.feature, login.java I created, this Java files are created under the step definitions package, as you can see, okay? These features files are created under the features package of SRC test resources, where this uh, feature uh, feature file related step definitions, okay? These are the step definition Java files are created under the step definitions package of SRC test Java, okay? So here, for each and every step of the scenarios in the feature file, we have implemented some code. And if you can clearly observe this code, guys, this code is following the page object model and page factory design patterns. You see, so we need to create an you know, uh, uh, object for the home page and then perform using the object reference of the home page. We are clicking on my account. Okay, this implementation of this method is here in the page classes. Okay, here we created under SRC main Java. We created the page classes for uh, for uh, centralizing the locators or objects. You can say okay, objects of the elements or locators of the elements. We have created under the respective page classes. You see. For example, here, this application, this application that I have automated uh, for that framework, guys, if you go to this login page, guys, in the login page, you see, you have email address, password, and login button. These elements, this email address, uh, element, password, element, and login elements related object or locators are created inside this login page dot Java. If you go to this login page dot Java, you can see that here we have created all the web elements and here at the rate find by is all from the page factory. Okay. Generally, you will get this question in the interview. Uh, because uh, the interviewer want to check whether you really have the knowledge of the things or not. Okay. So you have to show your confidence here. Okay. By explaining this framework in whatever the way you want. There's no particular way. This is how I, ex how I explain. You can explain better than me. Okay. Or in your own version. That's up to you guys. You see all these elements are created like this. All the web elements are locators are created like this. You see a private web element email field and here ID is provided. Okay. So these are the page classes guys. These are the page classes. Uh, and for each and every web element in the page classes, we have the methods here. Enter email, enter password, click on login button. And also we can put all this, uh, you know, uh, methods into a single method like login. Okay, do login or something like that. We can create and uh, combine all these steps. Whatever the way we want to use, we can use guys. Okay. It depends on the scenarios that we are written, uh, writing in the feature files. Maybe for other scenarios, we simply have to write a step like uh, user has to login. In that case, I may create a method here combining all these three methods. Okay. So that's how it works. Fine. So these are the page classes guys. Okay. This is where page object model and page factory are being implemented in this particular framework. Uh, initially we have this feature file for this, uh, each and every scenario in the feature files are implemented in the step definition classes. Okay. Of the individual classes, like for login feature, we have login.java for register feature. We have register.java sample such dot feature such dot Java is there. And inside all these uh, methods, uh, implementing methods for the scenarios of the feature files, inside this uh, methods, in this uh, login.java, register.java, and uh, such.java, we have written the Selenium automation code, which is actually using the page object model and page fact. Okay. These are the page classes we have created. And also, guys, uh, there may be some situations where, you know, 
uh, you have to create some common utils, some uh, some operations you have to repeatedly do. Okay, reusability is something that is very important. The common kind of reusability is like generating a random number or getting email with timestamp. Such kind of methods I created inside the common utils, and we can call this method whenever required. For example, get email with timestamp method is called in both of this. Uh, uh, step definition classes for example in login.java if i go here uh somewhere here you will find that guys okay so you see common utils dot get email with timestamp is there okay so we are calling that method and similarly in the restart.java also we have we we have uh, needed that uh email dot uh, you know so let's go there uh where's that so somewhere here it will be there just give me a second i'll show you here somewhere yeah common utils dot get email with timestamp so in the login is there in the register is it? these are the reusable methods guys common kind of methods apart from that we have uh, removed the hard coding of the data guys okay in this framework we have implemented removing the hard coding of the data so this kind of constants like implicit wait time page load time uh, explicit wait time okay that is basic time okay different explicit wait times we can queue okay all this uh, whatever the constants we have created the constants here in this common utils and uh, we have called these things whenever they are required okay so we have removed the hard coding wherever possible guys and also uh, if you go to this uh, what do you say this my hooks okay in uh, this is cucumber bdd framework right uh, here we have my hooks where we have at the rate before hook method and after hook method so this before and after hook methods will be executed before and after each and every okay before each and every scenario in this feature file for example this is a scenario before this scenario this before hook will be executed okay after this scenario this after hook will be executed not only for that particular only scenario guys, but other scenarios in all the feature files before every scenario in the feature file before hook will be executed where you are initializing the properties file then uh, you are uh, initializing the browser okay and uh, you are opening the application url okay that's we are doing that's what you are doing the before hooks okay so before every scenario all these steps are done opening till opening the application you are in the browser okay and coming to the after what we are doing we are okay here in after we are quitting the browser before quitting the browser if in case the particular scenario fails we are taking the screenshot and attaching the screenshot to the cucumber report okay and in this uh, framework guys we will have this cucumber report generated guys after running the scripts the cucumber report will be generated but how to run the scripts the simplest way to run the scripts here is uh, this uh, test runner class that we have created under runner package my hooks is created under the hooks package of SRC test java whereas uh, test runner is created under the runner class okay test runner is created under the runner class okay and uh, here in test runner if you can see these guys okay so here we have provided the path to the feature files and we have glued these feature files with their step definitions here okay step definitions we have to directly give the package name we have to give here the step definitions where is that here step definition package we have given and hooks package we have given where we have this before and after hook methods after gluing this feature with this uh, step definition sign hooks and uh, once you say plugin is equal to pretty, okay, you'll get a proper Eclipse output console results. And also here, this is a Cucumber report, okay, plugin. With this plugin only, Cucumber report will be generated. And uh, this is this at the rate run with is from JUnit guys and Cucumber.class is from, okay, Cucumber JUnit thing, okay. And uh, Cucumber options is also from the Cucumber JUnit thing, okay. So here, if I have to run this, to run this project guys, to run the uh, scenarios of this feature files and running all the individual automation scripts, right? So we have to right click on this uh, test runner and say run as JUnit test. That's it guys, all the automation scripts will run. Okay, all the automation scripts will run and once they have run, it will generate a report for us. Okay, it will generate a report for us under, you see under the target folder, which type of report, HTML report under the target folder. Uh, under the target folder, another folder known as Cucumber reports folder we are creating. Okay, under that Cucumber reports, we'll have Cucumber report.html file created. Okay, Cucumber report.html file got created guys. Let's open this uh, report, I'll show you. How this report is coming you see this what is the framework guys a lot of things will be there in the framework okay so you see one is getting failed and 13 passed and for the failed test you see this particular scenario is failing so the details why this step got failed that uh as, as such an error details are coming here uh you can investigate using this and along with that you are getting the screenshot attached okay you're getting this particular screenshot attached okay that is another another good feature you can say uh, along with that you're getting all these details like uh how, many, how much percentage passed okay uh, in which operating system the scripts got executed, which Java version, which Cucumber JVM version, all those things, okay, are coming here as additional details. And the logs are all nothing but the scenario steps, okay. Fine, hope you are able to understand the framework so far. And uh, the reason why I have named this uh, test runner is uh, I can even run, uh, because if the test keyword is provided as part of this runner class, either in the beginning or at the end, we can run this 
not only using the JNET, guys, there is one more. Instead of using JNET, if you want to use Maven, okay, if you want to use Maven to run this uh, feature files and automation scripts, I have to right click and say run as a Maven test. I can select this option, still automation scripts will run because Maven will only identify the Java files which are provided with the test keyword either in the beginning or at the end of the name of this file. You see, in the beginning of this uh, runner class, all the other Java files doesn't have the test keyword, but only this runner class uh, Java file only has a test. And because of which Maven will only recognize the test runner and uh, if test runner is invoked, it will automatically invoke the feature files and step definitions and hooks and everything. It will generate the report for us. Okay. And also uh, we, we can run this uh, framework for, uh, framework project uh, scenarios from the command line. Okay. And also integrate that with CI, CD, Jenkins, uh, Git, GitHub and everything. Okay. And a uh, few more things I need to cover, guys. If you go to the my hooks here, if you go to the my hooks, okay, before I end the explanation of this uh, framework I'm currently using in a project, okay, you can clearly see that here we have initialized the properties, okay. In this uh, before hook method, we are initializing the properties, okay. For, for initializing the properties, guys, we are initializing the properties, we have created this configurator, guys, configurator, okay. So new configurator. Where is that configurator? Configurator is under the utils, guys. Okay, under the utils, we have the configurator. So in the configurator class, we have created a method like initialize properties method. So uh, I'm I'm saying configure. I'm creating an object for the configurator, and using the object, uh, we are calling the initialize properties. Uh, using the object reference of the configurator, we are calling the initialize properties, and this properties file is getting initialized. Okay, where is the properties file available? Under the config package of SRC test resources. Under the config sub package of this SRC test resources, we have this config.properties file. What does this config.properties contain? If you open this config.properties file, you will see this browser, okay? On which browser you want to run the automation scripts are there. High level configuration properties need to be mentioned here. You should not be uh, mentioning each and every details. Each and every data should, should be placed, should not be placed here. Only the high level project details should be placed like browser name, URL of the application. If required, username, password, that's much. That's, that's much is enough, guys. You should not be going more than for the other things for the config details, like email and everything you should not give here, okay? So only the basic uh, high level project details. Okay. We, we are centralizing this guys. Okay. Why we are giving in the config properties file because we are centralizing the data here. Okay. We are centralizing the data here so that tomorrow if the URL, uh, if the client gives a different URL, you don't have to touch any of the automation script. Simply come to the config dots properties centralized file and update the URL here. The scripts will run on the updated URL. Similarly, browser also same thing guys. Okay. Tomorrow. Uh, if you want to run on any other browser instead of Chrome, you just mention the Firefox. But who is reading this properties file where the where these properties are being read? For, for example, browser relating the browser, guys. If you go to my hooks in the uh, before hook method, uh, which I named it as setup, you can name it anything though. After initializing the properties file, you see I'm calling a initialize browser method in the driver factory class. You see, there is a driver factory dot Java class. In the driver factory, we have initialized browser method. Okay. So we made it static, so we can call this driver factory dot initialize browser. Here we are passing the browser name, but from where this browser name is coming, who is calling this initialize browser? My hooks before hook method is calling that. Okay. While calling that method, initialize browser method in the driver factory, you see we are up, whatever the initialize properties file is there. From there, we are getting the property of the browser guys. Prop dot get property browser means from this properties file, the browser value Chrome will come and follow fall here. And that will be passed to the initialize browser. Okay, in the driver factory that is here to this particular method while calling this method, we are passing the browser name, which is coming from the properties file actually. And here we are checking if it is Chrome browser, uh, open the Chrome browser. If it is Firefox, uh, we are writing the Selenium code for opening the Firefox browser. It means Edge browser, Safari means Safari browser. And here we are writing some sample steps like, uh, you know, for initializing the browser, we are deleting all the existing cookies, if any. Generally, that will not be the case, but we are still deleting. We'll maximize the browser. We are maximizing the browser and we are setting some page load timeout. If you see the page load timeout here, guys, some constants. You see page load timeout. I'm not hard coding here. Okay. Common utils dot page load timeout means in the common utils, we have that. Okay. So this is the one. Okay. Page load timeout 15. 15 is uh, actually there. Okay. In that case, here 15. Implicit wait time. Uh, what is implicit wait time? The same thing is also available in the common utils. Uh, implicit wait time is uh, 10, 10 seconds. Okay. 10 seconds is coming to that point. Mm, then what else? Then we are returning the driver and we are uh, here also we are we have created one method to return the driver. This is useful in some other case. Okay. Like that we have created the driver factory. Fine. And uh, what else then? Configurator I already showed you. Common utils. And uh, how we have removed the hard coding of the data by 
moving these browser names and here in the my books also if you see the uh, after initializing the property uh, we are using get property of url okay from from this uh, common place we are retrieving the url guys okay the the url may get updated but whatever the url is there the, that will come into the before hook method and that will be launched okay fine that will be opened in the application uh, that is browser okay fine so uh, a lot of things got covered already and uh, hard coding how the hard coding is managed i covered and uh, because of this page object model and page factory uh, we are also removing the hard coding of the locators apart from removing the hard coding of the config details like uh, uh, browser and url we are also removing the hard coding of the okay we are also removing the hard coding of the uh, locators you see if you go to any of the step definition classes you will not see any locators like uh, xpath expressions id and nothing will be there it will not be visible to you because we have removed the hard coding of them uh, by implementing this page classes all this uh, xpath expressions and all for example login page email email address field password field you see all the xpath expressions and uh, id and all those locators are available here okay which have removed the hard coding okay if tomorrow if any particular xpath expression or uh, this id locator for any of the elements changes we know that where this uh, locators will be available they, they will be available in the page classes we'll go to the respective page class for example if email field changes i'll go to the login page I know that because email field will be there in the login page and in that I will update the uh, ID of that. If it is changed, if it has changed, I will update that. Okay. This is how we are centralizing the locators. Okay. And uh, for every page, uh, respective page, organizing this uh, locators well, uh, uh, okay, into multiple page classes. Mm, that is what is called as a page object model design pattern. Okay. But to support the page object model design pattern, Selenium guys have given you page factory design pattern. Okay. So both we are using in this page classes. So what else is left out? Uh, what else is left out is uh, passing the data. Okay, how the data is being passed. Uh, so apart from the common utils, uh, uh, sorry, apart from the config dot properties uh, properties like high level properties like URL and browser, there will be a lot of data, guys. Right? We have to uh, pass a lot of data to this automation scripts. So that data will be passed only from the feature files, guys. Okay, the main benefit of this Cucumber BDD framework is that we don't have to read the data from the Excel files. Okay. If you are using test ng hybrid framework with page object model and page factory, there you may have to use Excel files for storing the data. And uh, we have to write the code for reading the data from that Excel files and passing that to the automation scripts. But in Cucumber BDD framework, we don't need that because data will be directly passed from the feature file itself. You see here for this particular scenario, uh, here data driven scenario this is data it's not a normal scenario guys it's a data driven scenario this particular framework is a hybrid framework because it contains a general framework things along with the data driven tests are also there okay data driven framework is also part of this framework so we are calling that as a hybrid framework you see this particular scenario is a data driven test that we are automating the same scenario will be executed multiple times for this different sets of data that is called as data driven testing and we are automating that with the help of this cucumber bdd so instead of scenario, we have to write scenario like outline and here we have to pass the multiple sets of data from these examples. Okay. So this scenario will run three times for this uh, three sets of data. If you have 10 sets of data, the same scenario will run 10 times. Okay. And if you see other scenarios, guys, here, here also we are passing the data. You see from the feature file scenarios, steps itself, we are passing the data. Okay. The data is being passed to the code automation scripts from here, from the scenario. So we don't have to read them from the Excel files. Okay. So that's one thing. So next, what else? Next, uh, data passing is over. Okay, uh, reading the data from the centralized files and removing the hard coding of, of the data is over. And apart from that, guys, we have element utils also created. Okay, to make these operations work uh, more seamlessly, like clicking on the element and all the stuff. Okay, uh, we are we are creating this element utils under util package. Okay, instead of writing the code like a driver dot find element uh, by dot uh, dot click something like that, we are writing. We are waiting for the element and then clicking. Okay, such kind of uh, utility methods. Okay, element util methods we are creating is so this element util methods will be called from the page classes. This uh, element util methods will be called from the page classes. Whenever someone uh, has to click on an element in the page classes or particular element in the page class, we'll be calling this uh, click on element. We can give any name here. Okay, so and uh, use it for typing the text into the element. This much of code we have written. We are first waiting for the element. We are clicking on the element. We are clearing the text. And then we are typing. Okay, after that only we are typing. This is a proper click. Uh, I mean typing. Then uh, wait for. We are waiting for the element. Okay, this is a reusable method for if you want to wait for the element and then perform operation, you can call this method. And then select option in drop down. Okay, for that also we have created some element utils. You see all the high uh, low level code is written inside the select options and these methods are used called from the page classes. Okay, accept alert. There is a 
method. Okay, based on your uh, scenarios and your requirements, you have to create any number of element util uh, methods like this. Wait for alert. Okay, so mouse hover and click. Okay, using mouse if you want to click. If you don't want to do a normal selenium click, if you want to uh, click using the mouse, okay, by hovering it, then this is the thing. All the low level code is available here. Wait for visibility of the element. Sometimes you have to wait for the visibility of the element. Okay, then you will call that method. JavaScript click. Sometimes normal click or mouse click may not work. Then only option that will be available left out for us is JavaScript click. So in that case, the powerful click is a JavaScript click, uh, JavaScript click, and it's a final option for us. Okay, for clicking the elements and for typing also we can have JavaScript type. Many other things are possible, guys. Okay, get text from element. Okay, if you want to retrieve the text from the element uh, between the tags, you can use this method. Okay, we are writing this low level Selenium code, uh, Selenium code here. And these methods will be called by the page classes. Display status of the element also, the things are there. If you go to any of the page class, you can clearly understand guys, we are calling that element util methods. For example, for clicking, you see, element utils dot click on element. This method we are calling, okay, element, under element, we are passing the details like web element and uh, how much time, waiting time, all those things we are passing from this page classes. So this is how they are designed. Guys. The framework is very big. As you can see that um, I'm explaining, explaining, but it's not overing off. Okay. So I'm just thinking if there is anything else that I need to explain. So I covered all the stuff. Driver factory also I covered. My host covered rest runner, step definitions, properties. Everything is covered, guys. And here, this framework, uh, last last one apart from the report, last one is this uh, bomb.xml file, guys, uh, where you will add all the dependencies, all the libraries that are required for this project, okay, as part of the framework, like JNIT library is required. Uh, then Cucumber Java is required. Cucumber JNIT is required. Cucumber Core is required. Uh, Selenium Java is required. All the required libraries, okay, are added here as a dependency tags, Maven dependency tags in this form.xml file, and they will be automatically downloaded and configured in this project. And that's the way we are using different libraries in this project. The Selenium libraries apart from the Java library and any other libraries, Cucumber library we are using here, okay? So hope guys, uh, you understood the explanation about the framework that I am using in my project, okay? This framework may differ from 1% to another person, but Okay, this is a framework I can explain if the interviewer asks me, this is the best better framework I can explain, okay, in the interviews. And uh, if in case you want to uh, download the framework or look into that code that uh, you want to get this framework, okay, whatever that I have built, uh, it's available on my GitHub page. So type something like this, github.com, uh, okay, slash uh, Arun Motori, okay. Just type like this, just go to my GitHub page, we will see a lot of repositories, guys. Okay, if I open this in uh, incognito mode, it will be better. Otherwise, it's opening my account there. In your case, it will come like this, something like this. Okay, so here you have repositories option on this uh, GitHub profile page of mine. And here you can see Cucumber Hybrid Framework on the top. Just click on that Cucumber Framework. And uh, if you want to download this, you can download a zip file, okay? Or if you are using some, you know, right, uh, Git kind of softwares in your machine, you can copy this and clone this into your machine. Okay, you, the code will get cloned. Okay, the complete project will get downloaded into your machine. So, all these multiple ways of uh, downloading and using this framework is possible, guys. Okay, if you want to also explain the same framework, then uh, go to my GitHub page and get the framework. And then, whatever the explanation I have given about this framework, okay, you just watch it one or two times more because a single time you may not get it. Okay. So, because it may be completely new for you, for some of the people, some people may get it in one time, but some, all the people may not get it in one time. So those people just repeatedly watch my video until you get the clarity of this framework and until you get the confidence to explain this framework, this Cucumber hybrid, uh, uh, PDD hybrid framework with page object model, page factory in the interviews, okay? When it is asked in the interviews for you. So that's all for this session. Hope you got the answer for this question. Thank you, bye.